to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. And great to welcome back from the University of Newcastle, Professor in Nutrition and Dietetics, Claire Collins. Very important topic today. This one's you've done you've done a lot on and you've actually written a paper on Claire. Yeah, that's right. Someone said to me recently, Well, once you've had a heart attack, what's the point? You know, you can't do anything about it. And I've dug in and looked at all the research studies and the good news is that if you eat better after you've had a heart attack, you've got a much lower risk of dying compared to the people who don't change their diet. Okay. So it's looking at making some changes there in your diet. Yeah. And they seem to benefit you. Like there's about a 30% lower risk of dying from anything at all. And in fact, it's about a 40% lower risk of dying from heart disease. And Dave, the reason why it's so important is that in Australia, every 10 minutes, someone has a heart attack. And for about 17%, it's a fatal heart attack. Mm. But the really good news is that for 83%, you got a second chance. So let's get on to what foods can help What are some of these life. changes that we need to make? Yeah. Well, I was really surprised when I looked at it because it's not the same priority or list of importance compared to not having the first heart attack. So the most important one seems to be eating more whole grain cereals. Mm-hmm. And we have pretty low fibre and low grain intakes. And at the moment, people are saying, oh, don't eat them. But if you've had a heart attack, you need to get all of these into your weekly food supply. Barley, buckwheat, burger wheat. Regular corn is actually a whole grain and you can eat it as you know yellow corn or as popped corn. Um, millet, oats, so rolled oats and muesli. Uh, quinoa, brown rice, wild rice, rye, triticale and spelt wheat. So there's a phenomenal range of grains that most of us rarely have. And we know again that if you can, if you can get about two to three serves of these a day, a, nearly a 30% lower risk of, of death, basically. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Then the next up on the list, you probably would suspect that vegetables and fruit would be on there. Mm-hmm. But for every extra serve of vegetables and fruit per day, you reduce your risk of of um, of dying from heart disease by about four percent. So you know, ten serves a day, ten more serves a day, forty percent lower risk. And the reason why fruit and veggies are so important is that they contain a massive range of what we call phytonutrients. So they're things that help slow the progression of heart disease. And the other important thing is they're so rich in potassium, it actually counters the effect of salt or okay. sodium. So they help to lower your blood pressure. And that's really important because if your blood pressure is high, it's like you put your rate of heart disease in overdrive. It just mm. speeds up the rate of heart disease happening. Now, you've got a special talk you're doing soon. It's on Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah, I'm actually going to be speaking about this in a public lecture up at Hunter Medical Research Institute from 5.30pm with um, our leading cardiologist, Andrew Boyle. So people are certainly welcome to come along that. They'll just need to look up HMRI and give them a call to book in. Um, now, one of the other foods that's really confusing people, and there's, there's a lot of bad advice out there at the moment, is fats. Now, what we know is that every food that's high in fat even butter, contains a mix of good fats and bad fats. So the emphasis is on increasing your healthy fats. And this is the fats found in nuts and seeds, avocados, oily fish, olive oil, canola oil, and olive and canola and polyunsaturated margarines. They're all really healthy fats. Mm -hmm. We don't say restrict them. And in fact, you want to increase them. And the good news is that things like nuts and avocados and olives and oily fish, they taste great. So this is something that you need to have a serve of most days if possible. Whereas the oily fish once over a week is great. Okay. Now, you have got uh, a link to uh, the information you have. So yep. if people are interested, they could contact me at 2NURFM and I'll be able to send them in the right direction where they can read all this information. You will, because there's one more bit of advice they'll probably yep. want to see that's good news, and that's actually when it comes to alcohol. Right. Now, if you're not an alcohol drinker and you've had a heart attack, the advice is not, not to start drinking mm-hmm. and, of course, to check with your doctor because it's not compatible with some medications. But the good news is that people who are moderate wine, wine drinkers – and moderate alcohol of any type of drink actually have a lower risk of dying and dying from heart disease after they've had that first heart attack. But moderate is like only one to two drinks per day. Mm. So, and a little bit less for women than it is for men. And yes, red wine has the most evidence, but there's also evidence in men that any form of, of alcohol, so long as it's moderate, can actually reduce your risk of another heart attack. And then the last one on the list is salt and Basically, that means get that salt shaker off the table and look for the lowest salt 
um, alternatives at the supermarket and they experiment with herbs and spices. So the bottom line, Dave, is that you've had a heart attack, you've survived, you've got a second chance. Making the most of that second chance by eating better makes a dramatic reduction in your risk of dying and especially from heart disease. Good one. That is very good. And we'll look forward to that information and that link and I'll be able to connect all the people listening to that and they can find out more details. Great. Thanks, Claire. Joining us as we look at nutrition and dietetics today, Claire Collins from the University of Newcastle.